Yeah, we good. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Ding, 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 ding. I got my clap back. No cap. <laughs> this is everybody in Ava. You know, we're sponsored by Co Star Studios and the Mag Juice. And you know, this is the only place where you bring the topic. And it's your boy, J Mac. And I'm always on point like a Sharpie. Yo, it's your boy, Banks. And I'm back in the building. Your favorite homegirl, Mia. Hey, let's go. And today's topic is Is there a difference between red flags and boundaries? Who gonna take that off for me? I ain't gonna call him. You, know you ain't gonna say no names. I ain't gonna say no names. <laughs> I don't know. I want to hear what Mister Banks got to say. <laughs> what you, what you, what you got? What you cooking over there? I feel like it is a difference, um, because I feel like red flags are some are things like you personally don't like, you personally type shit, and boundaries are like some you set for yourself, like on a respect level. Mm-hmm. So, and boundaries, you can't, you really don't change boundaries because of some respect shit. And red flags, you can change them hoes. You don't think people change their boundaries? Not as much as red flags. For real? That's what I was going to say. That's I, a little. I was going to say, yeah, like, I feel like my red flags would change more than my boundaries. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't, uh-uh, I can't agree. I feel like you got your boundaries. Can y'all hear me? I feel like I sound weird. Don't yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Your voice is not as amplified as usual. I must just done lost it then. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Fuck it, because it ain't even hitting like that on the jump. But whatever, we're going to keep talking. Uh, I feel like red flags are like, it's shit. Red flags is shit you see in other people, though. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, it's like, uh, it's. It's not like boundaries are what you like set for other people know that they don't cry. Like I don't but like. But don't we, you have different boundaries for different sets of people? Uh, yes and no. Like, but for me, overall, like I know one of my biggest boundaries is that I don't like to be touched. You know what I'm saying? Like that's one of my, my. biggest things. You know what I'm saying? Like invading mm, a personal never space. Do that. Just because you don't never be all in my space touching on me and shit, do you? No. Nope. So that's why you ain't never found. <laughs> Why you ain't never found out? Because it's you. That's a respectable, di- you know, distance type of thing. But a lot of people don't have problems with personal space. Like that's just like one of my things. Like I'm a personal space type of nigga. You know what I'm saying? I get you don't never see me all up on people. I really don't touch people like that. Mm-hmm. But that's just me. Like that's one of my boundaries, and it's just I don't feel comfortable touching on people and people touching all on me and shit. Right, right, right. How many times have I ever hugged you? Jeremiah, a uh, very su- select few. I figured physical touch was not one of your love languages a long time ago. Facts. That, that's what I'm trying to get. That's, see, that's what I'm trying to get at. They're like, that's one of my boundaries. But for somebody, you think that might be a red flag? Oh, I went on a date with him. He didn't even hug me when the date was over. Like, red flag. So you don't hug the, you don't hug after your date? Like a church hug. Oh God. What's the church hug? The side <laughs> hug. They call them side hug. <laughs> Jeremiah, that's terrible. With the pat on the shoulder. No fold, man. Women hate them kind atrocious. of hoods. Yeah. Yeah, we like, you know, full full body hoods. Yeah, like affection and shit. A big I'm a big ass nigga, so if I hug you for real, you really Jeremiah, the, the girls like that. I don't understand what you're talking about. Oh yeah, if oh. I if I fuck with you, I'm giving you a big ass uh, like bear hug type. Clearly. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I make them feel like I know I be making they make me feel big, so I know I make them feel yeah. small. Well, so Jeremiah, like, that's because like, you talk to small women. What the fuck? Even if she was 6'6". Six, six. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is a hug after a date. Not that bad, but that is your boundary. So that's respected. You know it's it's respected. I don't give a damn if you're 6'6". Six, six. I'm still giving your ass a big ass hug. Oh, yeah, man. Mr. Uh, Climber. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... I don't know. I think everybody's boundaries. I, I just feel like people change their boundaries for who they want to change them for, though. You think so? I do. Like when when you like, well, you've never been in love, so I can't really give you that scenario. Why do fools fall in but love? usually, when you fall in love, you tend to change a lot of things that you claim or set boundaries for yourself for that person. So it's like 
something that you saw as a red flag initially and you set a boundary for it, you'll throw that out the window for somebody that you in love with or somebody that you love. I don't know. I can't agree with that. Because I would think I would think I would let my mama be all in my space. I don't really let my mama we be talking about we we talking about I, romantic, not familial. I kind of feel where he coming from because motherfuckers they they don't really have boundaries because they ignore the red flags. Well, a e- lot. Explain. Because, you know, boundaries and red flags, they kind of tie into each other, but they don't. Yeah. So, by you ignoring red flags, you just like, damn, I'm going to ignore this shit from this person because I fought with them. So, they don't even be worried about the boundaries type shit. Well, I mean, it's also with red flags. They can kind of appear at any given point in time. But, but are red flags actually, like... Cause this is a recent thing. You know yeah, what I'm yeah. Red flags are are new. <laughs> this is a recent thing. Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, not really recent, but you know, like recently to culture, to pop culture. You know what I'm saying? As a as a saying in pop culture, are these really red flags though? I mean, red flags are subjective. Yeah, I'm like for for you, like, could the person you love or possibly marry or a person you want to be with, could they give you red flags? Yes. But that doesn't mean that, that those flags are going to, you know what I'm saying? That, that, you know I don't I'm, know, Jeremiah. If 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 you see red flag number one that somebody is a narcissist and you continue to talk to them, at that point you've kind of accepted that red flag. It didn't turn green, but you've accepted like, okay, there are narcissists. But usually a lot of times I see with red flags, especially being a woman, we'll see it and completely ignore it because we're like, oh. He could be different. He could change, you know, living in this certain level of delusion that we live in. We could see he could be somebody different and then like we'll expect something different later when in actuality that red flag is literally that's what it is. There is no changing that. So this is my question because I don't know and usually this is something I I would know, but what is the lore of a red flag? Like what is the lore behind it? Yeah, like you know, a white flag is, you know, quitting. It's mm-hmm. over. I don't know what green is. I don't know what red is. Green is go. I think green, you, you didn't see the green flag trend on Twitter that day? I know, but that's my thing. Like, what is the actual lore with, of a red flag or a green flag? I'm going to, I mean, you usually, I hate to say that, but you usually <laughs> associate red with being negative. It's usually con- a negative connotation behind the color red. They say if you put red walls in your room, it's, it's, it's negative, you know, because it, takes the light out of the room, makes it all dark and stuff like that. So in my opinion, like I'm not sure what the lore or who created red flags or who made the terminology. I'm not sure, but I'm going to assume that red flags were created basically to say like, you shouldn't keep going. Like at a stop sign, if it's red, you're going to stop. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. At a red light, you're going to stop. So with a red flag, I would assume the connotation would be you would stop and not continue further in said relationship. But like I just said, a lot of people will completely ignore that flag because they'll be like, oh, maybe this isn't that big of a deal or maybe they can change or maybe this isn't who they are for real. And then in the end, you realize that red flag was there for real and it was there the whole time and you should have exited stage left instead of continuing forward. I feel like with women... They ignore all red flags. 100%. And, and men, we ignore the red flag depending on how big it is. That's how I feel. So, the, it's the size of these flags, too? Yeah. There are some, listen, I, I, I can be honest. There are certain things, like, that you know. Like, if you know somebody that you're dealing with is, like, like I hate to use this scenario again, but, like, if you know they a cheater. And you get in a relationship with them, you know it. You know it's a red flag from the from the first day. So at that point, for you to expect something different is wild. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not saying that's a big or a small red flag. That may be a big red flag to me and a small one. You, you know what I'm saying? It's all subjective. But that's, like, a, that's big for women. What the red flag? Well, no, this is little for women because y'all still going to do it anyway. Yep. Men, we're going to act accordingly. If we know you're a cheater, then shit, we're just going to be like, so be it. We ain't finna treat you like you a damn wife or none, none of this shit. Not every dude. Not every. It's just... Well, not every dude, but, yeah. come you know, on come now. on. We got them out here. <laughs> Everybody ain't pushing. ain't pushing P. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> but I still don't see how, 
I, I guess because I be trying to look at everything in a logical sense. Because, you know, as a woman, you know, we don't always think logically about a lot. So it's like, what are y'all's red flags with women? Like, what, what is what is something about a woman that would just be immediate? Like, nah, I can't talk to you. This is not going to go well for me. I'll go first. I, I think Jeremiah know with me. When we was at Club P and that girl was like, uh, oh. you finna pay my bills? I immediately, like, no. <laughs> like, I don't know what, I don't know if you think I'm buddy over there, but I ain't, nah. Mm-mm. I don't do that. That's an immediate red flag. Immediate red flag. Okay. My like, you not finna use me for no damn check, bro. This shit over with. Uh, I respect that. My, I don't have, like, I have an appreciation for all women. Despite the fact y'all hear me every week call these women bitches and hoes. Uh-huh. Despite the fact you hear me do that every week. <laughs> but I have an extreme appreciation for women. Because I grew up with all women. But when it comes to red flags and shit, I don't think. I don't think I base it off of what I don't like. I think it's more contrary to the person and what is being said and how it's being done. Mm-hmm. So it's not necessarily like, oh, she a hoe. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I can't fuck with her because I know 10 niggas that done fucked her. You know what I'm saying? Because necessarily she might not be on that type of time with me. Yeah. Why? You know what I'm saying? So it's like don't want to judge a book by its cover type hey, situation. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So even though I want to say, yeah, I don't like when a bitch say this, I like when a bitch say that, but when I get put in a situation, I might not actually do what I'm what I've been preaching all this time. Cause motherfuckers love to preach some shit and then don't practice. Mm-mm. Yeah, for hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, hundred percent. I have reneged on so many things I said I would not do. In the past, and I'm just sitting over here saying, like, was I just, just, I don't know. It's different. I think for me personally, I don't really have any set red flags except for, like, you know, um, I hate to say it, but the, the, the baby daddies are kind of red flags for me. Simply because, especially if your child is under the age of eight, yeah, don't worry about it, big man. I ain't gonna even, lie. Don't even talk to me. It's off topic, but I damn near came to the point to, Nigga daddy gonna have to be somebody uh step dad. It's a, it's a, it's a positive assessment. I can, I can I can feasibly say it's a positive assessment that if you don't have a child with somebody, y'all well y'all are twenty five. I ain't twenty five yet, but we're twenty five. Why you turn twenty five in like hey, a month? I, be I told no. my group chat this. I said <laughs> if you don't have a woman by the time you twenty five, you might as well accept being a step parent. You might as well accept it. I mean, but it, there are people who are over 25 that still don't have children. There yeah. are some. But that's a some. very small, it's, it's, it's small, but it's large. Because I meet a lot of people who don't have kids who are 25, 26, 27. But I also meet a lot of people who have children who are 25, 26, 27. So it's like, it's kind of the luck of the draw at this point, what you're going to get. I feel like 95% mm. of women I meet now have children. Maybe yeah. you just a mom attracted. Maybe you just attract moms. Nah, Maybe. I ain't gonna lie. I be on the talk, man. Yeah, I know I be on the talk tough. <laughs> All the bad bitches got kids. I ain't gonna lie. This, but you know what? I ain't gonna lie. Let me let me rephrase it. All the bad, fine black women, majority of them have kids. Because the men's said, you're too beautiful for me to let you escape. Also. Yeah, like you ain't going nowhere, bitch. Literally. On the note, let's take a note real quick for the uh, <clears throat> plan B and birth control people. Uh, yeah, that shit for white people, y'all. They ain't <laughs> trying to stop y'all black folk from having kids because y'all having a bunch of goddamn kids. On the side note, let me just throw that out there. Well, that's because they're not taking them first. Most black women aren't on those things. So. Yeah, exactly. The, the truth is that, that number, they're mad about that is because they're killing white people, not black people. But yeah, let's go back to the... Uh, <laughs> Go back to the topic. I just had to. That just we hit that, so I had to hit that real mm-hmm. quick, yeah. But yeah, sorry, I'm a political science person. But yeah, yeah, you're a political science major. Yeah, that was my shit. So I had to throw my little poli sign in there real quick. Just, I don't know. I just think. Oh, I got a question. What? So what is what is one of your boundaries that you think other people would consider it to be a red flag? 
I'm going to be honest. I'm going to keep it. I'm, I'm going on. I'm going on wax to be real transparent. Honestly, I just now really started to learn what a boundary is. I've never, I've never, like, I hate to say it, but like, I've never really had boundaries in a lot of my relationships, even like with my friends and like romantic relationships with like dudes and stuff like that. I never really had boundaries. Like I grew up in an environment with parents who were very helicopter as hell. <laughs> so like, it was like, I never really got to be, I always had to be good. I always had to do what they told me to do. So it's like, now I'm an adult, so I don't really have boundaries to say, I'm not doing this. So now when I'm telling people I'm not going to do something for them, they throw a fit about it simply because they're used to me always doing it for them. Mm -hmm. So I've just now gotten to the point to understand, like, you have to have healthy boundaries to say, like, oh, I'm not doing this for you or, oh, I'm not going out of my way. Do I still have people pleasing tendencies? Yes, I still do. It's a work in progress every day. But honestly, off the top of my head, I can't really tell you a boundary that I've set besides like I really do respect my personal space. So a lot of people don't know. I don't let a lot of people come to my house and it's not even just because it's my mama house. I've always respected my space like that. That's one of one boundary I can say that I have. If you make it into my home, I really fuck with you. If you're not getting in my house, if I don't fuck with you at all, like you're not, you're not, you can sit outside. I sit outside and cake with Damn, you. Damn, you yelling. I didn't even know I was yelling. My bad. <laughs> like, I sit outside my house and cake with you all day. But if you actually make it into my front door, that means I genuinely fuck with you. And I, I like your energy enough to have it in my home. I, I don't fuck with nobody. That negativity shit. I don't fuck with people that I don't know coming to my house. I, I don't. I, I'm not a sage burner. But <laughs> I'm just saying, I, I don't see how y'all be. A lot of people be comfortable with just letting know anybody come to y'all house. Like, and it ain't even just because I stay with my mama. Even when I was even in college, nobody was coming to my house like that if I ain't fuck with you. So yeah. that's about the only boundary that I can say that I have at the moment or that I can think of off the top of my head. But nah, for real. Uh, Mr. Bynes, you got one? A boundary that could be misinterpreted as a, well, a boundary that, yeah, can be misinterpreted as a red flag. Uh, I just want to tell people it's okay to tell somebody no. Basically, what Mia was talking about. Damn. It's okay to tell somebody no. That's the thing. And y'all be, you know, you tell somebody no and they just throw a fucking fit. Dead ass. Like, there's a lot of people out here who will get upset with Throw you. Throw a fit, bro. Because like, you don't want to do something for them. Look, look, no bullshit. Last week, I had some lifesavers. Some gummy lifesavers at the ring. We outside chilling. Everybody chilling. Bro, I pull out the lifesavers. Bro, give me one. Give me one. I said no. I said no, bro. This is my favorite candy. I don't share it. <laughs> don't folks do a fucking fit, bro. Like, damn, bro, you ain't going to... Like, we boys. I'm like, I understand that, but... <laughs> <laughs> just like, just cause we like, I gotta share this shit. Like, I bought this shit. Like, I'm finna eat it. I'm finna enjoy this shit. And the folks do a fucking fit, bro. Like, I was finna go. I was like, bro, what the? They was like, wait, what the fuck, wait, bro? I was like, nah, bro, I ain't even finna do that with y'all. Like, it's okay to say no sometimes. Like, motherfucker ain't gotta always say yes every just cause y'all fuck with each other type shit. Damn. That, so that's going down. That's really around here going on. Yeah. You've never, you've never told somebody no and they got upset with you. Ah, you know, well, me, y'all know how I be telling y'all all the time. I feel like you got to go and set that boundary from the beginning. So, you know, I always be telling folks no from the from the jump. Because if I go and tell you no from the jump, you going to always expect me to say what? No. So, I always... So when but see, you see, that's because you're good at setting strong boundaries. You know what's, you know what's bad, though? Yeah. They always throw a fit when you say no to the littlest shit, bro. Yeah, that too. It be the little shit. It be simple stuff. Damn, that's crazy. It always be little shit, the but fact, you had, somebody asked me, "Hey, you got you got some money on you?" You say no, they be all cool and shit. But it'll be some little shit like, "Hey, bro, you can um you can come do this for me, like come write this paper for me or something." You be like, "No," and they get mad at y'all. Yeah, writing that paper is not love. Well, you know, some little <laughs> shit. I just that was just thinking of yeah, <laughs> shit. Yeah, I feel, it, I feel. It. I was gonna say mine was like a red flag that I considered to be I me mean, a boundary that I thought that I would think people would consider to be a red flag is literally the opposite of what y'all just said that I be too adamant about shit and I be so you know what I'm saying strong and set about shit that I think people people don't fuck with it especially like 
So what do you mean? Like when you, because you're, no, I had to say like setting your ways, but I in, mean, in that type of sense, is that yeah, what you're saying? you know what I'm saying? Like I be so firm and adamant about shit and I don't be giving a fuck. Because people are used to a certain level of leniency, like. I guess, like, because I know you. If you told me no, I'm. I genuinely feel like you're telling me no because you, you genuinely just don't want to do that shit. Most of the time, if I ask you some shit, you probably gonna say yeah to it and be like, all right, bet I'm, I'm gonna do it. If it's if it's possible, you yeah. know what I'm saying. But people expect a certain type of leniency from people because of the relationship that they have. So that's why, like, in your situation, you being firm on saying no, they don't like that. They're going to try to make you say yeah. Like, you're going to keep coming back like, all right, you, you ain't never met a female you told her you don't want to fuck with her, and she consistently like, yeah, I'm going to stay here until he fuck with me. She tried. Bruh. They don't work, though, because Lord. I'm the worst person to be doing this shit to, because I'm just going to ignore you. Which is crazy. Ignore the hell out of you. <laughs> I mean, but everybody does making them mad, too. It and does. It, it really make it worse. Like, the more, like, you don't get them attention and do shit, they... It get worse. That shit get worse. It does. And then the the crazy part is the ones that you be trying to give attention to, them the how they be trying to ignore you. Yep. <laughs> it's just so fucking crazy. Like I said last week, the people that want you, you never want them. It's always the ones that don't want you like that that you want. Male right. or female. What that boy Clay said, y'all gonna do anything for the B. <laughs> it's for the bitch. <laughs> y'all do. But I mean, most of the time, if you don't, if y'all don't really want to talk to somebody, y'all not gonna do it though. Uh, unless you're bored. It's fifty fifty. It's fifty fifty. Yeah, 50. I gotta be bored as hell. <laughs> you already know. I I gotta be bored. I want to talk to y'all, cause I'll leave a motherfucker on red quick. Don't care. <laughs> I'm picky though, so I don't know. I'm on. I be on some other shit. I get I get bored kind of easily, so you know I'm I'm quick to cake on the phone without a shit board. <laughs> so it's damn near hard to persuade these hoes to get on the phone, man. Dog, Jeremiah, because it's talk. it's easier to text because you're no it, it, no no no. Listen listen to my theory. Listen to this theory. I feel like it's easier to text because you have more time to really think about your thought. If you on the phone. It's like if you ask me some shit on the phone, I immediately have to come up with a exactly. response. I can't sit yeah. there and think about what I have I to say. That. No, I need you to know off the rip. If I ask you this shit, <laughs> ugh, I need you to answer this shit. Ain't no, he... ain't no waiting until motherfucking I text you at 8 a.m. and you got to wait till motherfucking midnight to respond and shit. Cause Hell no. Nah. Because it's like you have to really think about what you're saying. And it comes from a, because that comes from me. I'm an overthinker. I overthink everything i like i have to have time to process but like if i get on the phone it's straight off the dome on, on the phone i'm just saying whatever come to the mind you're gonna get whatever i got but usually if i'm texting i have time to think about what i'm saying before i say some crazy ass shit i'll be like all right this is a little bit too that's, much that's crazy that's probably why these whole can't hold conversations no more exactly they got so much time in a text message to think about what they gonna say and then when you get their ass on the phone and you be that's why I tell them. Too rapid. Then that, they ain't look, got that's why I tell them when I first meet them, I don't like texting because it's miscommunication. No, that shit's for sure miscommunication. I mean, is it? It yes, can be it miscommunicated. Man, but... that shit is miscommunication. And I'm gonna tell you why too. Motherfuckers don't use period. Hey, y'all motherfuckers <laughs> out here, man. It's periods. It's commas. It's exclamation <laughs> parts. Semicolons. Motherfucker, y'all with the school, bitch. If you pause while you texting this shit, like you took a second to pause, put a fucking comma right there or a period. It don't got to be the end of a sentence. Niggas is misconstrued and shit when you just got this big ass, long ass, run on sentence. Well, first of all, you should take everything for face value. Or if you're confused, ask further questions. If mother- People don't ask questions, Jeremiah. That's why your ass need to be on the phone. <laughs> no, that's why your ass need to learn how to fucking punctuate sentences. Or you can send an audio message. You know, those exist. Oh, yeah, I love those. Fuck that. I love them. Learn audios. how to punctuate. Y'all motherfucker went to school for 12 motherfucking... No, 13. <laughs> you went to school for 13 motherfucking years. And, and some years. of them also have gotten uh, degrees, associates and bachelors and uh, graduates. Some, some, of y'all, talk- some of y'all went to school for 20 years. D- f- facts. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. I went to school for 17, with well, 18, 18 years. Motherfucker, I use commas and periods. 
Well, everybody doesn't use commas and periods. They they don't know how. Use them motherfuckers. Are y'all fucking retarded? No. They just they're just not. Text messaging has come become such a thing where you don't have to use those. Right, this ain't SMM SMM no more. <laughs> this ain't SMS no more. This ain't SMS no more, man. Fuck this shit, man. Look, this what everybody in Avery, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Sponsored by Coastal Studios and the Mac Juice. And you know, this is the only place where you can say whatever you want to say. It's your boy J Mac, and I'm always on point like a Sharpie. Yo, it's your boy Banks in the building. Your favorite homegirl, Mia. Hey, and we just gonna take a little toast to everybody not being able to say what they Man, you told me it was straight at first. Now he switched up. Told me it was dead. I need someone to help me. Help me. I know that you can't feel me. Feel me. When you meet the real me. The real me. It's something that you can't see. Can't see. I need someone to help me. Help me. I know that you can't feel me, feel me When you meet the real me, the real me It's something that you can't see